All right, I see some folks are signing on to, uh, to the session today, which is great. I want to extend my welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us today for this webinar and information session on the Master of International Business Program here at the Smith School of Business. Um, uh, just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. I want you to know that we will be recording today's session. And so if you are unable to stay or if you want to go back and reflect on any aspect of what we're sharing today, you'll certainly have the opportunity to do that because you will be receiving the recording in uh, some follow-up. Uh, from your attendance today. Um, also want to encourage you to submit any questions, um, any comments, things that you were hoping we would maybe spend a bit more detail in um, or that we don't maybe cover uh, in the course of the presentation. Please feel free to submit those as we go and you can do that using either the Q&A or the chat window uh, that should be on your screen. So with that, we'll uh, we'll perhaps jump right into today's content. So uh, my name is Carrie Regan, and again, I really want to extend a warm welcome to all of you, and uh, and I'm excited to to be able to share information with you about what I think is probably one of Smith's most unique master's opportunities. I'm very grateful today to be joined by my colleague Carrie Fraser, who oversees our applications. Carrie is an advisor uh, for applicants uh, who are interested in the program. She works with every candidate on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and she will be sharing toward the end of our presentation today a little bit about what that process looks like. I also want to extend a, a warm welcome to Samantha Kabitovich. Samantha is a president of our Student Executive Council and a current MIB student enrolled in the double degree, and I'll have uh, Sam tell you a little bit more about her background in just a moment. So this is, uh, this is the team today, and uh, again, very grateful to have some variety of different perspectives uh, to share with you um, over the course of our conversation. So let me tell you about the Master of International Business or what we refer to around here at Smith as the MIB. Um, this is a one or two year program designed for students who have done a bachelor's degree in business or a bachelor's degree in any other discipline provided you've done some foundational courses in business. And Carrie will speak to that a little bit more. So this is a program that has been designed to complement your foundational studies in business. So courses become more about strategy, about application, about uh, working, what does it actually mean to execute in a global context? Um, so it's really uh, specialized in the sense of you know, focusing on, you know, that, that operation, that global operations, but also really focusing on what does the human side of that look like? How, what does it mean to work cross-culturally and what role does culture actually play in your ability to execute in the global sphere? So Samantha can perhaps talk to you a little bit, sorry, talk to you a little bit more about what that actually looks like in practice, because she is now in month six of her two-year journey uh, in the MIB, and she can talk to you about that. So this is a program that we really have, um, the catalyst for the development of this program was, of course, the extensive network of business school partners we had around the world at the undergraduate level. And really, we felt like there was an opportunity for us to expand this into a master's opportunity uh, for both for students who've ha who had had some international exposure in undergrad and knew they wanted more. Uh, for many of you though, it may be that you just didn't have an opportunity to do things like an exchange or work in a culturally diverse environment in your bachelor's. And so you really are looking for that in your master's to help further differentiate yourself, make yourself more competitive, explore international opportunities, gain new perspectives. There's so many takeaways I feel like for students coming out of this experience very tangible skills, things that are transferable to industry in so many ways. Um, and that's evidenced through, or, or that's achieved through things like experiential learning, through immersive exchange, um, lots of applied learning in the classroom, our team-based model and what that looks like, 
the Global Consulting Project, which is a very real world experience um, for students who might be interested in um, consulting, but also lots of other industries. So uh, again, we'll get into a little bit more detail about what this looks like, but before we do that, I really wanna give um, Samantha an opportunity to just share a little bit more about her journey, her background. And I think Sam, if you could focus a little bit on kind of your final year in your bachelor's, you know, where, where did sort of continuing education, I guess, come into play and what was it about MIB that you felt was a good fit for you? Thanks so much, Carrie. So as it says on the screen, I actually did my undergrad here at Smith as well. Um, so when I was considering options, one of the things that was really impactful for me was considering kind of who's the faculty, who do I want to work with? And um, we have amazing faculty here, and it was a really big selling feature for me to stick with those people for another year. So um, that was a very big moment in my decision from the start is I'm, I'm not feeling kind of ready for the world yet. I want to continue pursuing education, um, but I don't want to leave campus. Queens is a really cool school and I've enjoyed my time here very much. So I wanted to stay in the Kingston area. Um, but when I was considering options for what to study, the, one of the first things I was debating between was, do I want to go more research academia path or do I want to um, kind of pursue um, a career in consulting or just in industry in general? And what's really amazing about the double degree is it almost lets you explore both. So I'm doing a double degree with a master's of science in strategy and consulting out of Katolika. And what's really nice about this is I'm doing a course-based master's right now here in the MIB program, but next year it's going to be courses in the fall semester, but then all research-based beyond that. Um, so I really wanted to get my hand in, hands into research and experiencing that. Um, so I liked that this blended both. Um, I think it was maybe a matter of I want to do everything still and I need something that allows me to still continue to try out everything. Um, like many of you, my education was really kind of not cut short, but it really changed during COVID. Um, I didn't get to have an exchange. I know that's a very common reason right now for people kind of in the program. Um, but I really cared about having that international experience, having a bunch of students come on exchange to, here to campus at Queen's um, in my undergrad was really impactful, but I wanted to have that kind of swap experience to experience new culture in person. Um, so I've I've had that experience every day. I've never been in a room with such a diverse group of people. And that's now my experience every day. And I love it. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So yeah, as Samantha mentioned, she has is doing the double degree. And we can certainly talk to you a little bit more about what that looks like. But I think at the end of the day, one of the great, one of the amazing features of the program is just the sheer amount of choice that you have to really curate a program that's going to align with your goals. So in Sam's case, she wanted to leave the door open on, on the research side. She also has some great industry experience and certainly I think is looking at the program as a way to further enhance those opportunities. Um, you know, and she's been able to uh, curate this, this opportunity that really does enable her to, to potentially explore both of those avenues. And that's just one of the cool features, not to mention, you know, in September, she's going to be heading to Portugal to live in Lisbon for a year, um, which again, as you think about, you know, what the stories that you will tell and how that impacts you and what you're able to then leverage as you then navigate industry or whatever your next steps are, um, you really start to, to differentiate yourself from folks who maybe have done a more traditional path. So I think that's just another one of the great features of a program like this. So just to kind of give you a broad strokes um, uh, understanding of the structure of the program, um, basically the, the light purple portion of this slide really does speak to the time that students spend at Queens and the, the requirements for the Queens degree, which is essentially three semesters. Um, the fall semester is cohort based and is really about those foundational learnings as well as connecting with your team, which we assign for you. Uh, and the startings of this global consulting project, which as you can see, does span the entirety of the degree. Students then, as I mentioned, have just a, a real variety of, ch of choices to make in terms of, do they do that double? And if they do the double, do they wanna spend their first year abroad or the second year abroad? Um, and you can see that the different schools uh, have different pathways. 
The other thing that's unique is each of the schools offers a slightly different academic degree. And so depending on what you might want to specialize in or the areas that you might want to go a bit deeper in, each of these options will tell a slightly different story. Um, within the context of your time at Queen's, the winter semester for many of our single degree students will mean they're off somewhere fabulous going on exchange. I had a meeting with a team today. One of them was in Thailand. One of them was in the Netherlands. One of them was in France and one of them was in Kingston. And that's just very indicative of what happens in that winter semester. You're still very much connected to the school and to the program but you're having this immersive global experience somewhere else. Um, and so again, we wrap that experience with this team-based consulting project, which always is something that our alumni reference as being something so full of very real, real world takeaways. So Sam, I don't know if you wanna to speak to that a little bit or just in terms of the structure, um, the consulting project, you're kind of, again, now into month six. You've just had a big deliverable for that. Maybe you could unpack that a little bit for those that have joined today. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the really neat things about the consulting project is beyond just being spread across the world trying to navigate teamwork, you also get to really put you take initiative to pick your own partner. There's options kind of within the school as well. Uh, but my group really excitingly has this awesome partner that we're working with. And um, what a lot of companies do is they almost treat it as a recruiting pipeline. So they're almost kind of testing how you work. You're testing how they work. Um, it's a pretty neat experience. You're also kind of gaining resources from them. So not only are you learning in, in the classroom, but you're applying that to the job market and then you're applying what you learn kind of in industry back to the classroom as well so it kind of feeds both ways at the same time um from a team perspective i've never met a group of people that i've enjoyed working with more i'm going to the dominican republic with uh, one of them next week um we're, we're all just kind of happy to be together um we had a little bit of a a fun breakdown where everyone decided they actually wanted to stick together in the winter semester. So we did some moving around so we could spend another four months together. Um, that is not the norm. Most of my classmates have groups spread around the world, but I think we just decided we got along too well to, to separate just yet. So we've got group members that have extended to do a double degree. Some have switched into a summer exchange. So because of the flexibility the program offers, we actually were able to, to stick together longer too. So that was kind of a nice little flexible moment for us. Um, speaking to the one year kind of time at MIB versus year two for a double degree, um, I really cared about having another year in Kingston. So that was how that choice was made for me. I have a partner who has another year here at Queens. So it was a nice opportunity to kind of stick on campus and kind of keep relationships with professors, um, work just in the King Kingston community. Um, and another thing that's really nice, because I'm going to Portugal where there's kind of lower wages and be harder to work while not being able to speak Portuguese can kind of creating more relationships with professors here allows me to kind of whether it's TA or research based in Kingston while being abroad because I'm still a full-time student so that was a really appealing factor for me. Yeah that's a really good point because regardless of whether you do the single degree or the double degree while you're abroad, you do maintain your status as a, a full status as a student here at Queens. And so you can be still tapping into some of those great resource that, resources that Samantha mentioned. Um, I did see a question come in with regard to internships. And so I did want to just quickly address that, as you can note in this particular slide, it's not a formal part of uh, the degree at Queens. I will say, though, that there are a couple of our double degrees that do have an internship requirement while you're abroad. So for example, the Bocconi degree does require you to do 10 weeks, for example, of professional experience as a degree requirement. In addition, the ESSEC double degree, which is located in France, actually requires 12 months and they do have sort of a formal track to help you land an internship. So if internship is something that's important to you, that may be something that pushes you to consider doing a double versus a single um, as well. And Samantha, maybe you can talk about this. You will have some time, a window of time in between your first year and second year. Um, I know you are planning on working and as are many of your double degree colleagues. So you can maybe talk about how that works. Yeah, absolutely. So right from the start, once you get on campus in September is on campus recruiting and there's no pressure to engage in it then there's more recruiting cycles that kind of happen throughout the year. 
Um, so next summer, and also why I decided to do the double degree to gain another summer, I'm working in consulting at EY. Um, so that I actually landed that job from on-campus recruiting here. I met one of the recruiters in person and they referred me right through. Um, so there's lots of great networking opportunities right from the start. Um, it was a really organic conversation and it landed a job. So very exciting there. Um, but because you have like almost four full months free before you're going abroad, if you're doing kind of year one MIB here, year two abroad, you, you really do have a full summer just as though you would any like kind of undergraduate degree. Um, so it's very flexible. And it, if you're wanting to get an internship in Canada, the timeline will work no matter what, and yeah. as long as you're not leaving too early to exchange. Um, and most companies are quite flexible with end dates. Start dates are a little trickier if they, they're bringing in a full cohort of people. Um, so it's nice that you're done in time to start, but then you also have that time to get where you're going um, to go abroad. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. So hopefully that answers your uh, your question about the internship. Okay, so I do want to talk a little bit about the classroom experience because, you know, a lot of students say, you know, what is kind of the learning experience like? What is the um, delivery approach? And, and again, Samantha can speak to this in a bit more detail. So. Um, we, I would say that many faculty take a very mixed pedagogical approach to the classroom where they're incorporating lots of different learning and teaching styles, depending on what's being discussed and the content uh, that they're trying and outcomes they're trying to achieve. I would say there's probably a bit more of a heavy reliance on case teaching. Uh, that's probably a most, the most consistent approach that you'll find in the classroom. And again, that's really... Um, as a way to get you to apply the learning that you've had and also give you an opportunity to learn from a very diverse and you know variety of different experiences that exist within the actual student body. Um, so Samantha, I don't know if you want to spend a bit of time talking about like what does it what does a typical class sort of look like and what are the expectations for students? Sure, there's definitely a bit of a mix, but um we're very discussion focused here. And I think that's something that's very valuable. So whether it's preparing a case before class to then kind of bounce ideas off of each other and the international's perspectives actually make it a very valuable lesson because even though I think, oh, there's only one way to look at this, there's actually way more. Um, and it's not something I experienced as much in my undergrad, I think, because we had all the same kind of matched foundations, whereas this we don't. So we get to discuss, usually it's got a cross-cultural aspect in it. So often we'll have someone who's representing that culture in the classroom anyway. So if we're discussing, for example, moving a US company into India and what type of challenges that might look like, there's almost always a student from India who was like, oh, I never thought about this this, this way and same for us. So it's always mixed. It's a very interesting experience in that sense. Um, kind of reports, any sort of submissions are usually more written, very applied. Um, some of the finance classes do have exams, but you're mostly doing kind of written assignments. Um, which I personally love because I get to bring a, a lot more creativity to it than a normal exam space. Um, and it's a mix of when they'll be due. Sometimes it'll be due late at night, other times it'll be due right before class. So it's very much up to the professors, which that flexibility is usually really nice because you don't have 800 things due the same day, you have it kind of throughout. Um, and the nice thing for us as well is because the program only has a few courses running at a given time, the deadlines are always pretty spread out. So it's a lot more manageable and we're all in the same kind of mix of classes. So we can always um, not work together, but at least be in it together in the sense of, hey, we're all busy at the same time. Let's take a break. Let's go to the library. It's It feels like a team all the time. Yeah. yeah. And that cohort based nature, I think, really does help with that. And it's relatively small. So just to give you some insight into what our typical class profile, we're anywhere from 85 to 100 students typically, um, and uh, they come from more than 20, sometimes 25 different nations. So you do get that opportunity to learn from people from all parts of the globe. Our double degree connections typically indicate or mean that our uh, class has 30 to 40 percent of the students coming from across Europe, um, another 25 to 30 percent from across Canada or North America. Uh, another 20 to 30 percent from Asia and then rounding out Latin America, the Caribbean, Africa. Um, so you really do from year to year get uh, this cross section of students who've all had different lived experiences, different cultural value systems that inform the way they see the world. And so you really do get challenged on a lot of that. 
it's not always easy, as I'm sure, sure Samantha can attest to, but the learning that comes from that, I think, is so valuable. And when you think of a place that you want to be tested or have some of those elements tested, I think there's safety in an academic environment where you can feel comfortable to challenge some of those things and really take that as a learning opportunity. So it's definitely um, something that I think is really magical uh, about the program. So Samantha also mentioned a little bit about the careers piece and you know things like on-campus recruiting, which is where companies obviously come to Kingston, they're here on campus, they're hosting industry nights and information sessions. You can meet with recruiters, you can meet with people who work inside those companies as a way to, to fully understand where what what that what it might mean to work there. So that's certainly one element, but I, I want to just sort of get across that the career management piece is far beyond just that one uh, activity. And what's really good, I think, for you to understand as people who may be considering the program is that career management is something that is very much intertwined into the experience. This is what we call a professional degree, and it is designed to prepare you for your next job or your first job, I guess, depending on what your background is. Um, and that the, the programming that we have is actually designed very much to meet you where you are. So you may have had some professional experience already coming into the program, and you know that this is something that you, this, you need a degree like this to enable you to continue on in that path. So you may be ready to go right into job search, recruitment, um, negotiating with a potential employer. Um, and so you're in that launch phase. Pardon me. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. However, you may also be somebody who's still in that seeking phase. And so you may need access to different kinds of resources, things like self-assessments and career coaching to help you discover what where it is you want to go um, or somewhere in between. And I think the big takeaway here is that our career management folks really do um, want to give you a um, what you need, depending on the, the phase that you're in. So Samantha, can you just talk a little bit about like what does it mean to work with a career coach? What does career education actually look like? And how does someone leverage this alongside, you know, uh, a busy academic workload? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's very much relationship building at its finest. Like not only are you learning with a coach how to network with people, but you're also almost practicing human skills just by chatting with them. So um, one of the things I did really early on was set up kind of bi-weekly meetings with a coach just to say like, let's touch base. I'm, I'm someone who really needs deadlines. Like I will not start something until the very last minute. I need that kind of date. So if, it, if I knew I was going to apply to a job, say October 31st, I'd be starting my career coach meetings in September and I'd want to have check-ins. For example, two weeks out, I want to have my resume, kind of a review session on my resume. Let's focus that time on that. Um, so that kind of was a push for me of, okay, I know they need time to review it. So two days before that, I need to have a resume written. I can't just leave it. So kind of giving yourself manageable steps so that when that job deadline actually is happening, you're more than ready. Um, another thing that coaches are really helpful for is kind of planning how you craft your story. So for me getting into consulting, I needed to have a, a much stronger why than I came into the program knowing. I didn't even know what consulting was before I started a business degree at all. Maybe by third year, I kind of understood the concept. Um, so not only was I learning, practicing how to do case studies with a coach, but I was also learning how to talk about what I'm interested in, what I do, actually bringing meaning to the, the jobs I've done in the past. What, what does my story look like? They're really amazing at kind of crafting that narrative not for you, but making you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a pretty empowering process because you're learning about yourself, what your interests are, what that means for how you find meaning in a career. Um, and they really push you to learn about yourself. So it's, it's a great process. Yeah, yeah, I heard. And I think that's a great summary. And I also, like, I remember uh, someone said, like, they help you develop your strategic plan to get you from where you are to where you want to be, even if you're not necessarily clear on where you where it is you want to be, <laughs> right? They'll help you uncover that and uh, you know 
acquire that knowledge, not to mention your peer group as well, right? So this is something you can be leveraging through the peers that you're in class with. Like, what did you do last summer? Or what did you do in between second and third or third and fourth year? Um, maybe that's something I'm interested in. And again, the, the sense of community that I think is curated amongst our students does also help facilitate that in a big way. So on that note, um, we do focus a lot in addition to obviously a rigorous academic experience on kind of helping students build community and come together outside of the program as well. So these are a few snapshots, some of which are from this year, some of this are from previous years. Um, you know, so it's sort of this idea of work hard, play hard, you know, invest in the students around you, invest in that community, build that network, use the time that you have together to come together. Um, Samantha, as I mentioned, is president of our student executive. And so we work with them. Uh, we as a, the administration work with them to help facilitate some student activities. Um, I don't know, Samantha, if you want to speak to kind of some of the things that encapsulate beyond the classroom, kind of helping facilitate that, can, that community. Yeah, absolutely. We're kind of filled with events and little activities. We're a really close cohort. So the most recent event we had very unofficially was last night, we were all playing pool together. But we have different activities. Honestly, most nights of the week, there's always people looking to engage. A lot of our MIB students end up living in houses together. So we kind of have houses that we end up going to. I'm actually not in one of them, but I always know if I, I need a warm pizza or something, I could probably just show up, which is always a great feeling. Um, but some of our events, we do a culture night at least once in the year. And that's an amazing way to bring kind of food representing your culture. I am from Canada and I didn't want to bring poutine, but I'm also from New Zealand. So I brought everyone flat whites and I was like, I know this is a food, but everyone needs caffeine to get through this night. So here we go. Um, so you can get a little creative with what you bring and that makes it a lot of fun. There's also music from everyone's cultures happening. It, it's just a really sweet night to get to know your class a lot more. Um, from the start, we were doing fun activities. We just welcomed exchange students in January and we did escape rooms. I tried axe throwing. I'm very bad at axe throwing is what I learned. <laughs> but we do so many different fun activities together and it, it honestly makes building bonds with each other so much quicker. Um, so just from our first week of orientation here, you can see a picture of the boat crews. That's my cohort there. Um, instantly friends. It, even if I didn't know anyone's names that week, I knew that everyone cared about me and I cared about everyone. And it was just so easy to, to bring things down a level for once we got into the classroom. It was easy to discuss because we're so discussion-based. You want to make that kind of psychological safety from the start. And the activities we do absolutely do that. So it's a really nice, easy way to engage. It's not this heavy drinking environment. It's what can we do to just actually have fun together? And that's been super meaningful for me. Definitely. And you know, Samantha's outline and, and explanation of the experience, I've been director of this program now. This is, I'm going into my sixth year. And I can tell you that it's a very consistent experience. Even the cohort that we had um, which you can see actually members of that cohort in the top right hand corner, those were students who did the program in the height of COVID. So, um, you know, there were lots of challenges in that year in terms of in person versus virtual delivery and, you know, um, I think that there is just something that really does connect MIB students who have this sort of like mindedness lean into difference connect with people who are like-minded, be open-minded, that just brings these cohorts together every year. And so we as the program team look to provide as many of those opportunities to bring students together uh, as we possibly can, be it doing something athletic, being doing something, you know, solving problems together, like in an escape room or, you know, sharing each other's culture. So um, lots of ways for students to round out kind of their academic learning with, again, just building a really strong connection with each other. So we do that, um, again, by events for sure, but also just some additional supports that we have in place, both within the program here at the business school and then broadly across the university. So coaching and advising on everything from your academics to health and wellness, 
the exchange office who provides support on helping you navigate kind of that part of the program, the, uh, the application phase to our partner schools, preparing to go support while you're abroad. It's all kind of baked into to what it is that we deliver. Um, career education and support, again, as we've mentioned, is definitely a big part of the journey and the experience as well. And then there are lots of ways that you can get involved. So for example, if you're interested in being part of the student leadership team, um, if you're interested in being a student ambassador and helping to, you know, speak to others and being open to speak to candidates uh, like all of you uh, who might be interested in the program, as well as engaging in things like the Certificate in Social Impact, which is an optional certificate program that students can do alongside their academics. So just being part of a business school like Smith um, does give you access to lots of other things, just beyond uh, kind of what you might experience um, in the classroom, for example. Okay, so with that, I'll maybe turn it over to, uh, again, my colleague, Carrie Frazier. Carrie will talk to you a little bit about what the application process looks like, what we might be looking for in terms of, you know, what differentiates a really strong candidate um, from one maybe not as strong, and, uh, and then how you might want to engage in that process. So Carrie, over to you. Perfect. Thanks, Carrie. So as Carrie mentioned, my name is Carrie Fraser, and I'm the application advisor for the Master of International Business program. So my role is to really work with all of our applicants throughout the application process and help them create a strong application file to present to the admissions committee. So we are looking for candidates who have strong communication and interpersonal skills. We're really looking for candidates who show strong leadership skills, strong ethics. Uh, we're looking for candidates who have the ability to be part of a team and really want to be part of a team. The program is very team-based, so we're really looking for those students who thrive as working part of a team environment. We're looking for students who are curious about other cultures and are really eager to work with individuals from other backgrounds. So not only do you get that international experience when you're on exchange, but you also get a very international experience in the classroom at Smith as we have students from around the globe who join the program. So there are several components to the application process. You're not required to submit all those application, application pieces at once. We will work together to build your application file over time, and I will help guide you throughout the application process. So we do work on a rolling admissions basis. As I receive pieces of your application file, I will be in touch with you and ensure that you're aware of the next step in the process. Once your file is complete, we schedule an, uh, schedule an interview with the program director, and then your file is reviewed by the admissions committee. And I would help work with you and help guide you and direct you through that entire process. So in terms of admission requirements, we are looking for applicants who have completed an undergraduate degree in business. If you have completed a degree, but it's not in business, you would be required to have the following four business courses. So we'd be looking for intro to marketing, intro to finance, macroeconomics, and financial accounting. If you don't have that undergrad in business, you would need to submit a competitive GMAT or GRE score. And if you do have an undergrad in business, but you haven't maintained an average of a B plus or a 3.3 GPA in your final two years of your undergrad, you would be required to write the GMAT or GRE. So all of these uh, admission requirements can be found on our website. So work experience is not required for admission to this program. This program is designed for you to do in the early stages of your career. And typical, typically our students come to us either right out of undergraduate or within about two years. So in terms of specific pieces of your application file, the first thing you would need to submit would be the application form from our website. You can also submit your resume and an unofficial copy of your uh, transcript directly from our website. If you have any work experience, please include that on your resume. We also really encourage you to include any travel or exchange opportunities on your resume, any intern experience, anything like that that's really going to help strengthen your file and help differentiate yourself and make you stand out from other applicants, it's really important that you include that type of information on your resume and in your application file. So we do need to see your references, and this tells us about others' perception of you, how they see you working as part of the team, and how they would see you benefiting from this program. Another piece of the application package that we require is a cover letter. So this is really your chance to introduce yourself to the admissions committee. In the letter, you would outline the skills you bring to the program, why you decided to apply to this master's program, and how you really hope to leverage this degree in your future career. Another aspect of the application process is a video essay. 
So this is done on an online platform. You'd be given three random questions. You have a short amount of time to prepare your answer, and then you respond on camera. The video is then sent to me, and I do a review, and then follow up in terms of next steps. So all of those pieces, they all come together to make your application file. And as I said, it's my job to help work with all of our applicants to put together those strong application file before it goes to the admissions committee for review. So in summary, if you are interested in applying to the program, really simple, you can just go online to our website. You can start by completing the application form. If you wish, you can also submit your resume and transcript online at our website. And then from there, I would do a preliminary assessment to determine if you're suitable for this program and then be in touch with next steps. So certainly please feel free to reach out. Um, just you can go online to our website and complete that application form. So over to you, Carrie. Excellent. So yeah, Carrie does such a great job of highlighting kind of how we approach admissions. It is slightly different probably for many of you than what you experienced as an undergraduate student. It's, um, but I do think that it is very, it is very much what you can expect as a professional graduate student at Smith. It really does start at that application step where you're getting that individualized attention really such that we can help guide you and ensure that, you know, this is the right option for you. Um, the program is, uh, we, you know, we have lots of fun. There are lots of ups and downs. There, the teamwork challenges, the diversity um, challenges that might uh, you might encounter, um, the intensity of delivery, all of those things can provide obstacles. But if this is the right program and if your motivations align with what the program outcomes are, you can navigate all of those challenges much easier. If perhaps you've made this decision for, for not the right reasons and you're not really engaged, that's not going to be a, a good experience for you. And so our goal is to really try and, and align those uh, expectations with program outcomes at the very beginning. Um, in addition, obviously, to making sure and making an assessment of you know, the fact that you have the right um, experience, background, motivation, and competencies to be successful in the degree, because that's also a key priority for us is making sure that students can navigate the process effectively. Okay, so we've certainly gotten uh, through a bunch of information today and hopefully have helped bring the program to life for you a little bit. We definitely want to hear from you if you have questions, if there were aspects of the program that maybe you were hoping to get more insight into. Um, we could spend hours and hours unpacking all of the unique features of this program. Um, the goal today, though, was to hopefully bring, again, bring it to life a bit through hearing it from a student's perspective, as well as mine and Carrie's um, about the opportunity. So any questions that you have um, for Sam, for myself, uh, that you were interested in, we're definitely happy to spend some time on that uh, as well. So first question, um, do we accept a three-year degree um, in program admissions? And the answer to that is, is quite frankly, yes. And, and actually not just from India, but from many places. Um, I would say that, um, you know, it may be an instance, depending on academic performance, we always need to make sure the foundational courses are covered. Um, a GMAT or a GRE may be needed to supplement your study, uh, depending on, on overall performance. But yes, we had definitely have many of our students from Europe also go through three-year bachelor programs um, and therefore, uh, you know, and have been successful in the program. So, um, but I would say, obviously, there is some scrutiny um, with regard to making sure that you've got the foundational courses that you need to be successful. Okay, the next question, is it possible to work in Canada after this program as an international student and how would be uh, this be different for if you did the single versus the double? So that's a great question. And yes, the program uh, does qual qualify graduates to uh, receive or apply for a postgraduate work permit. And that is uh, programming that is currently in place with um, immigration uh, policy or immigration in Canada. And so um, typically your postgraduate work permit is equivalent in terms of time to the actual time that you spent studying. So for example, in, with our, our single degree, 
you do a one-year program, it typically equates to a one-year work permit. Um, although some interpretation of our degree, because it does do three consecutive semesters, some students do a, are able to translate that into a 18 month or, or two year work permit. It ultimately is often dependent on the uh, officer that's processing your file. Um, for students who do the double degree, many of our international double degree students have managed to secure a three year work permit because again, you are registered and paying fees to Queen's University for the entire duration of the program, even if you are spending some time of that abroad. So that, you know, if that is the ultimate goal, then certainly there are some advantages in that respect to the double degree. Um, I would say that many of our international students have then, once they complete their postgraduate work permit duration, are able to then parlay that into permanent residency programs, which at that point you've got some Canadian work experience, which can then help uh, in terms of fast tracking those types of things. So many of our international students who graduated, you know, five, six, seven years ago are definitely still here pursuing residency or have achieved residency and maybe pursuing citizenship. So definitely I would say that Canada right now is, um, has some very friendly policies related to students who make the decision to invest in their education here in Canada in terms of postgraduate opportunities afterward. Um, okay, uh, another great question. Should I consider applying for MID after fourth semester results? So um, I guess if you are in your, my recommendation would always be uh, if you're in your fourth year of study or your final year of study, whatever that looks like for you, I would say um, if we can have at least one semester's worth of grades out of your final year, that is always much more helpful um, in terms of our evaluation of your academic standing. If we have no documented performance information from your final year, that can be really challenging for the admissions committee to make a decision on. So I would say early on in uh, that last semester is probably better because the earlier you apply, the better. Um, but certainly including one semester's worth of grades from your final year is definitely appreciated. Uh, another question, I have a bachelor's and a master's degree in computer applications. Would I still be required to give GMAT? Uh, Carrie, do you wanna maybe respond to that one um, as it relates to the required courses? Yeah, sure. I mean, in a specific instance like this, I think it would just be best to submit your resume and transcript so I can look at the this specific instance to see, um, you know, to see when you graduated from your undergraduate degree, uh, to see what the grades were. So typically, and I see there is also mention here of about six years of work experience. Um, it may be a case that one of our other Smith graduate programs may be a better fit, just depending on when you graduated and what your work experience is. As we mentioned previously, typically our uh, students come to us directly from their undergraduate, typically with no more than two years of work experience. So I would say for this individual, if you can, uh, you know, submit an application on our website, include your resume and transcript, that will just give me a little bit more information so that I can provide some more accurate direction. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think what you want to consider is, um, first of all, you know, we're not going to be going unlike an MBA, which maybe goes back to some of those foundational elements in finance, accounting, economics, et cetera. We're not going to offer that in the MID program because of the understanding is that students have taken that. So, you know, you have to be careful about putting yourself in a position where, you know, you don't have that foundational understanding. And then also, as you navigate the early stages of your career, four and five, six years in, you probably want to be in a program where the people around you have similar levels of experience because you're going to be in a position to add a lot of practical value to discussions and what does it mean. You want to make sure that you're also able to extract that same value. And if most of the people in your class have just graduated, don't have a lot of formal professional experience, you may find yourself lacking in that respect. So um, something to definitely consider. Okay, um, 
Someone asking about an email for further queries. And yes, what I can tell you is you will be in receipt of an, of an email follow-up from your participation today. And you can absolutely reach out based on that information, um, schedule a virtual consult where someone can will work one-on-one -on -one with you, or you can just submit those queries. A member of our recruitment team will get back to you typically within a day. Um, depending on volume from day to day to, to respond to those. So definitely encourage you if you have specific queries, again, to Carrie's point earlier, you can submit a copy of your resume and unofficial transcript for that preliminary assessment, which is kind of a non-committal way of saying, you know, I have a few questions about whether or not my profile fits and get that information before you go through the process of the video essay your transcript requests more formally references that sort of thing so hopefully that helps. Um, okay, another great question here about scholarships um, so uh, we do have some scholarship money available uh, typically. These are admission based scholarships, and so you don't have to apply separately for those you can. Um, you are automatically considered for those at the time of application. And so um, they, you know, they're, they're a small portion of the overall uh, investment required. And so many of our students do definitely uh, pool their funds from a variety of different sources, some loans, some savings, some scholarship, uh, maybe some investment and support from family. That's not unusual. Um, and then in terms of what we consider for those scholarships, they are merit-based. So certainly we are looking at prior academic performance, but also many of the things you've been involved in from a leadership capacity in terms of, um, you know, extracurriculars, student clubs, activities, things you've done, work that you've done while you've been studying, all of that is taken into consideration when we evaluate for scholarship. Okay, and then another great question, do we have any industry student clubs? So um, this one is a bit challenging uh, in the sense of there are broader clubs that you can engage in at Queens. And we actually did have a group of students this year start a fashion and lifestyle club, which I think has, is just in the process of being ratified. Um, but Samantha, maybe you could speak to this more broadly um, from a Queens perspective in terms of ways that students can involved in some of those activities. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we do have our student executive council, which is what I'm on, and we plan some events. But in Queens, more broadly, there's lots of um, sports, industry clubs. It depends what you're interested in. So um, for example, as master's students, you still have access to the full gym environment. Within there, they organize the dance team, which has like thousands of members. I used to teach for them, so that's why it's my best example. Um, but you can get engaged there. Um, also, from the career advancement perspective, even though you're not running um, events, there is events that you can still attend. So clubs put them on, but so does the career advancement center themselves. Um, so even if you're not doing the planning piece, you can get involved. We also have student ambassadors, which if you're ever on our website, you can kind of toggle to that page. Um, they're able to set up events. So a couple of our student ambassadors have been running what we call running dinners, where we do um, you're paired up with a person and you meet in groups of six at different houses. So you have each course of a meal kind of separate and you get to see a total of, I guess it's like 10 people or whatever by the end and you get to know them much better. So just being a student ambassador kind of opens you up to running events. Maybe you want to bring, for example, a company in to do some sort of industry night, being an ambassador would even let you do that. So um, lots of ways to get involved that have a bit less of a commitment than a club, just because the, the program's so full-time that there's not as much time to put into that. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And then again, as Sam has already spent four years at Queens, she's just a, a really great uh, spokesperson for those sorts of things. So, um, okay, uh, question about can a two year gap between high school and college affect my application um, if those um, years included professional experience. Carrie, I don't know if you want to take a crack at that in terms of uh, how a candidate might use that to their advantage or speak to that in their application. 
Sure. I mean, I think we really look at all applications on an individual basis. So again, it's a case of passing along your resume and transcript. I mean, but we, you know, the work experience isn't required, but perhaps you had some really, uh, maybe you had an exchange experience in those, those years between high school and college, or maybe you had a, an intern experience. So we'd always take, uh, you know, everyone's different circumstances into consideration, look at it. Um, I, I don't think it would negatively impact you at all. I mean, I think any extra work experience like that is of value. So again, it's, we really look at all applications on a case by case basis. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, a great answer. Um, we definitely, uh, you know, we know that everyone's pathway is slightly different um, and some students will graduate and then go out and work for 18 months and then come back. And so if you've sort of taken that opportunity to build that gap in in an earlier phase, um, it wouldn't necessarily negative Im negatively impact you. Everyone has a different uh, pathway. So, um, okay. And I think our last question here, just as we're getting close to the end of the hour, if you're doing your master's at a partner and will complete your double degree at Smith, can you work in Canada after you get your degree? So first of all, welcome. Uh, excited that you could join us today. We love our double degree students that come to us from our partner schools. Um, and the answer to that is yes. So when you graduate uh, from the double degree and from Queens, you will be a Queens alumnus. You will be a degree um, holder from Queens. Therefore, you qualify as well for that uh, work permit. Typically, our inbound double degree, so the students that come to us from the partner school qualify for a one-year work permit. Um, although, again, we have seen different interpretations of that um, based on who's processing, because you are registered at Queen's for three consecutive terms, which some uh, border agents will, um, uh, for them, that translates into kind of a year and a half because a typical academic year in Canada is eight months. And so, it, you know, there's some variability there, but typically it's a minimum of one year. Okay. Wonderful questions, everyone. Thank you so much for your engagement. Also, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. Also, thanks to Samantha and to Carrie for their contributions. Um, I'm hopeful that what we've done has got you excited about this opportunity. We definitely encourage you to engage with us uh, further for any additional questions that you might have. Certainly, if you're interested in applying, uh, we definitely are in uh, the very thick of the recruitment cycle for our class starting in September. So definitely encourage you to reach out and, and be part of that. So um, wishing you all a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks again for joining us and we wish you much success and hope to hear from you. Bye for now.